Okay, so good morning. Can you hear me well with the volume? It's okay? Perfect. Um, so it's great to be here at PyCon uh, again. Uh, someone told me yesterday that I give different talks. And I heard this, this one isn't going to be an exception. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm a full-stack developer, and I work as a system architecture consultant, uh, mostly doing web development. Um, and I've been using Python for pretty much everything for the past, for more than 10 years. Um, if you want to follow me online, my domain name is yuv.al. Um, and you can also follow me on Twitter. Um, so a little background about this talk, because I said it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to talk about the stuff that I do um, in my work, like the web development stuff. It's cool stuff, but not, not for this talk. So I never really learned physics, um, and I didn't learn uh, RF engineering, and I never learned signal processing. But I do think that radios are really cool things, and I remember playing with them as a, as a, as a, as a child and, and kind of being fascinated by the concept of like how a radio actually works. Um, and hopefully in this talk I can show you some neat things, um, and maybe you can also be interested about them as well. Um, the slides and the code for this talk are going to be online on GitHub um, afterwards. Uh, not now, but uh, I'll open it right after the talk. So let's talk about what radio actually is. How many of you think that you know what a radio more or less is or how it works? Raise of hands? OK, nice. That's pretty good. Um, so radio is essentially, uh, we use it for communication mostly, right? So radio is kind of the concept that we can transmit radio waves in one place and receive them in another place. And, and that basically gives us a communication path between two different locations. Um, and that communication can be kind of a broadcast. Like a, like a radio station. It can be like a point-to-point -point communication. Um, but it's essentially the, the, the physical phenomena that, that we can use radio waves. Um, so again, I don't know physics at all. Um, but I, there's a really nice diagram uh, on Wikipedia that, that makes a lot of sense in my head uh, when I'm trying to fi understand what a radio wave actually is. So radio waves are essentially waves of electromagnetic energy um, that, like we said, we're transmitting them from one uh, place and, and receiving them on another. Um, and, and if we put an antenna um, where we want to receive that transmission, um, then we can think about how that uh, wave that is invisible and we can't see, we can't feel it in the air, but it's, it's all around us because it's everywhere. Um, so, so if we put an antenna, we can actually measure an electrical current at that point. Um, at that point called R in that diagram. Um, and and it, once we measure that electric uh, signal, we can actually do something with it. Uh, this is all very hand wavy, uh, but this is as much as I can tell you about the physical phenomena that's called electromagnetic uh, waves or radio waves. Um, and this is all we need to, to move forward. Um, so I hope you like this diagram because I think it's cool. Uh, so let's talk about um, hardware radios, because this is the radios that we're most familiar with. Uh, so hardware radios, like, like this device, for example, uh, we, kind of, we can all have a good intuition about what it actually does. Right? So we have an antenna that receives radio waves from somewhere. And we have two knobs, one that we can tune to a frequency that we tell the radio, this is the frequency that I want to be listening to. And another knob that says, this is the volume that I want to listen to. And this device um, will basically just play the radio station that I want to play, um, that I tuned to. Um, so it takes the signal. It uses the, the electronic, um, um, this is basically a very stupid device, right? It, it has an electronic board inside. It does the signal processing. And it takes the speaker and it plays out uh, audio for us to hear, like a radio station. Um, and this device doesn't know how to do anything other than that. So this is a hardware radio. This is another type of hardware radio, right? Our cell phones. Uh, let's, let's put aside the, the fact that they also have software running on them because they're, they're basically small computers. Uh, but if you think about the, the functionality that lets us make phone calls and send messages um, and, and send data over, over, the, the, over the air, then essentially this is a hardware radio. It, it only knows how to contact the, the GSM cell tower um, and transmit our voice or the data from our, our, our handset to, to the cell tower. So this is another type of hardware radio. But we said we're talking about software radios. So what is that? So a software radio uh, like this, uh, I also have the, the, another one here connected to my computer. This is the antenna. Um, so a software radio um, differs from a hardware radio in the fact that we still have an antenna. We can still receive the radio uh, waves going through the air. But this device isn't doing any hardware uh, encoding or decoding. It's not doing any, any, anything real with a, with a signal that we're receiving. Um, so the point is that we take whatever signal we get from the air, and then we 
um, just pass it into the computer and we're going to do the processing on the software side. So the point of all that is essentially that if we have the right software on running on our computer that knows how to take a signal and do the specific processing with it, we can essentially build any type of radio application that we want. And, and that's a pretty cool concept if you think about it. Um, because in the hardware radio case, you, you need you know, a, um, a hardware radio that knows how to listen to the radio, make GSM, uh, GPS, like whatever you can think about that does radio. In this case, we just need software. The, the hardware doesn't matter at all. So that's a pretty cool concept. Um, I'm going to show some examples of what people are doing with, with SDR. Um, initially, by the way, this dongle is, if, I don't know if you can tell, it, it, it says DVB-T. DVB-T is a digital video broadcast. It's a IDAN Plus. Um, yeah, so, so, so this dongle is essentially made, built for that. You can connect it, you can actually receive TV signals. Um, but what we're going to be doing is, like, is different stuff. Like people are doing uh, airplane tracking. If you know this website called Flight Radar, um, Airplanes basically transmit their location all the time for safety reasons. Um, so people can just receive these transmissions because they're being sent everywhere. Um, and, and then websites like this collect it and you can like see airplanes in real time as they're flying over your head. That's pretty cool. You're using the same dongle? Same dongle, yes. Um, weather satellites, another really cool thing. So you have uh, satellites that are flying over the Earth and taking pictures of, of, uh, for weather purposes, and they send them back down with radio. So again, they're, they're just sending them everywhere. So you can put out an antenna and actually receive the weather pictures as they're being um, captured from the satellite. Another really cool thing. Um, and then of course you have all the Internet of Things, uh, all these different uh, wireless switches and wireless alarms. Um, you can think about how you open your car, right? You have like a wireless switch. Um, all these different types of things use radio waves, um, and we can use SDR to uh, interface with them. Um, so, really lots of cool things that people are doing with this thing. Um, so, I want two more concepts we need to talk about before we move on. Uh, one is, is, is the idea of sampling. So, we we're talking about radio waves that are essentially an analog signal, right? It's kind of, it's, it's not a, a discrete um, thing, but, but it's, it's a physical phenomena, it's an analog signal. We, when we move that into the digital world, we're talking about discrete samples. So we need to measure that radio wave um, very quickly in many different points in time. And once we have that, we can actually reconstruct back the original uh, wave that we want to uh, that we want to listen to. Uh, the concept is called IQ sampling. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, this is a really good link. Um, it, this is kind of the basics of, of of how SDR actually works. It's not too interesting right now. Just kind of keep that in mind. The second concept we need to talk about is modulations. So if you imagine the voice uh, coming out of my mouth, the, the air waves coming out of my mouth, and you imagine that as the blue signal on the top, how far do you think people can hear me? Maybe in this room, right? People downstairs definitely can hear me, and definitely not someone 50 kilometers away. My voice will never be able to reach that far away. Uh, but if I want to transmit my voice on a radio station, and I want people all over the country to listen to me, uh, then we need to have some way of doing that. And we do that using what's called a carrier wave. And just like it, it sounds, that wave carries other, another type of data over a, a further distance than what is originally possible. Um, so in that case, we're, basically, we're doing a mathematical operation that's called modulation. And we're basically taking the original signal, the blue line, and, and uh, modulating it, uh, we're, we're sorry, we're modulating the carrier wave, the red, uh, the red line, and we're receiving one of two types of modulations in this case that you might have heard of. One is called amplitude modulation, the other one is called frequency modulation. That's AM and FM on the radio. Um, amplitude modulation basically takes the carrier wave and changes the amplitude, the volume of the wave, according to my voice, for example. Uh, the second type of modulation is called frequency modulation, and it changes the frequency of the wave, like how fast or how slow it's uh, oscillating. Um, and this, is, again, is a mathematical operation. You can think about it as like connecting the two waves. You get the, modulation, the modulated signal, and if you want to demodulate it back, which is what we're going to be doing in a second, again, it's another type of mathematical operation that extracts the original signal from the modulated signal. And that's what we're going to be doing in Python. Before we do that, I want to show you uh, a program that's called GQRX. GQRX uh, is a program, uh, it's also open source, it's not written in Python. Um, we're basically, right, what we're looking at right now is, is, um, is I tuned this to, so, so the red line here is 91.5 megahertz, 
And we, if you, you, you can actually see the radio stations, right? This is a radio station we're going to be listening to in a second. You have another one right here. Um, and, and, and this is really neat. So this is a, a tool that you can start visualizing how the radio waves actually look when, 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 you, when you tune the radio. Um, and you can tell that right now we're looking at, this is going to be important in a second, we're looking at a, a pretty large window of frequency, right? So we see several different stations that we're looking at. Uh, this is going to be important in, in a second. Uh, so this is a really nice tool that you can use to kind of explore and find the signals that you want to be, uh, that you're interested in. Um, but we're not going to be working with this too much because we're going to go back to our Python code. And we're actually going to start writing Python code that receives the signal and does some interesting stuff with it. So we're going to be using um, a package called PyRTLSDR. Um, that is essentially the Python bindings um, for the RTLSDR driver. Uh, RTLSDR being the, the dongle that, that I have here and that you saw earlier. Um, and we're basically initializing the, the RTLSDR object with uh, three uh, main parameters. The first parameter is called the sample rate. The sample rate, if you remember from, from the sampling uh, slide that we had, tells the dongle how many times per second are we measuring the, uh, the energy passing through the antenna. And, and in this case, I told it that I want to measure it 1.2 million, uh, million samples per second, right? 1.2 mega samples per second. And I'm using a scientific notation, if you're familiar with it. Um, so it's 1.2 and then six zeros, or sorry, one. More pretty much, if you, if you know how it works. Um, the second thing that I'm telling it is, is, is the center frequency. Uh, the center frequency is basically which frequency do I want um, uh, the dongle to be listening to on, on the center. Uh, so, so like we said in GQRX, um, is, is how big the window, uh, sorry, the, the center of the window uh, on what frequency is it going to be. And the third parameter is called a gain. Uh, it's not that important. It basically tells the dongle um, how much volume to apply uh, n not to the audio coming out, but to, 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 the, um, to the energy coming into the antenna. So, so how sensitive is the antenna going to be to the radio waves coming uh, into it? So once we initialized uh, the SDR object, we can, uh, we're going to tell it to read some samples. And assuming we want to uh, listen to 10, uh, seconds, 10 seconds worth of samples, then we're going to take the 1.2 million samples per second, multiply it by 10, and then we get 12 million samples that represent 10 seconds of, of uh, data coming through uh, to the dongle. And then we close the, the um, we save that into a samples variable, close the device, and we, then we can continue with the processing. In this case, uh, I already have uh, a sample that I captured, a sample file that I captured previously. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to be uh, using uh, this logic, but rather I'm just going to load some samples that I have from a file. Um, how many of you know NumPy? That's awesome. Great. So you probably know even better than me what, like, what I'm doing here. Um, I'm basically taking samples from a file. Uh, the samples are, eight, uh, are unsigned 8-bit uh, integers, and I'm transforming them into uh, an array of complex numbers. Um, if you don't understand the math, that's fine. Um, but basically, I'm just uh, transforming them from integers into complex numbers um, and doing some, some shifting here to, to compensate for the fact that they're unsigned integers, um, and I want them to be uh, signed because uh, the numbers, um, they do have a assigned value to them. Um, so we loaded the samples into the NumPy array, and we're going to be working with this array uh, for the next few slides. That's all we're going to be doing. The next thing that we want to do after we loaded the samples, uh, if you remember from GQRX, we were looking at a pretty wide window of signals. And we said that we wanted just to be listening to one station there, right, right in the middle. So we need to, um, this is called a decimation. We need to decimate our signal um, and essentially make the window much more narrower. So we're focusing our, 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 our signal only on the station that we're uh, interested in. Uh, so in this case, we're, uh, we're decimating from 1.2 million samples per second, uh, the number that we remember from earlier. And we want to decimate by a factor of six because we want to reach a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. Because 200 kilohertz is basically the, the, the bandwidth of an FM radio station that you want to listen to. Um, I'm not doing this by myself. I'm using a function called decimate uh, that's coming from the SciPy signal uh, library. Um, so we basically cut our signal, um, divided it by 6, essentially. 
once we did that, we can actually do the, the, the mathematical step that's called the demodulation, right? So if, if you remember from the, from the modulation slide, we're going from the frequency modulated signal and going back into the original signal that is my voice or the music or, or whatever you want to hear on the radio station. Um, if you are interested in the math, we are essentially um, measuring angles between complex uh, numbers. So I'm basically taking each complex number in my array and measuring uh, the, the angle um, between them. Um, if you care about the math, then that's cool, and if not, then don't worry about it. Uh, but this is the mathematical step that does the demodulation for us. One more step, and I don't know how to explain it at all, but this is called the de-emphasis filter. Um, what I, I can tell you does, it makes things sound better. That's all this thing does. Um, so you can, you can hear the signal, and it sounds kind of weird, and then you apply these filters, and you get something that sounds much, more, uh, much better. Uh, we're also, again, we're using um, an L filter function, again, from SciPy signal. Uh, these are the different parameters. Um, we're not going to go into the math because even I can't explain it. Sorry. Last thing we need to do before we, we feed uh, the audio into our speaker, uh, we need to decimate our signal one more time. And the reason is that, if you remember, we're using 200 kilohertz uh, of, of, uh, of samples, 200 thousand samples per second and if I try to feed that into my audio device on my computer it's not going to work because audio cards don't know how to work with that, uh, that many samples. So I'm going to decimate one more time by a factor of four um, and I want to reach uh, 50,000 samples per second which is something that sound cards know how to handle. Um, so we're going to decimate one more time and last step we need to do is we need to amplify the volume. This is literally is just a volume operation, right? So we're taking a small number we're making it larger, uh, 10,000 um, is, is a good value for what we're doing. Um, and we're basically telling the array, from now on you're going to be 16-bit integers because that's what we're going to be feeding into the sound card. And the last step. So in this case I'm using Alsa Audio, that's the um, audio library for, for, for Linux. Uh, I'm opening an audio device, I'm setting the bit rate at 50,000 samples per second like we had earlier. The format is going to be 16-bit um, little endian integers, uh, period size irrelevant for now. Um, and we're basically taking chunks of those samples and feeding them into the device. So if all went well, let's see what happens. There you go. So this is a sample that I captured yesterday uh, in the afternoon uh, sitting outside. Um, and I think this is like this is pretty pretty cool. Um, you, know, like you take a mathematical operation and then actually hear the samples that they captured. It's pretty cool. So yeah, there you go. So so um, let's review for a second what we did here. So uh, we took a fixed set of samples that I captured earlier, right? It was a static set of samples, and then we did some math on them. We maybe know what the math is, we maybe don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Python and, and the NumPy and SciPy are all very good at doing fast processing of, 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 uh, of, the, of that data. Um, but the question is, what happens if we want to do real-time data? What happens if I want to uh, write a program that continuously listens to the radio um, and then continuously plays uh, the audio out to the speakers? So the question becomes, how do you synchronize the different uh, input and output sample rates uh, in that same flow? And that's a, that's a pretty tough thing to do. So, so like I can show you, I have a program here um, that I can run um, that, that can do, yeah, I need to. Yeah, so this is radio that's playing live right now, okay? So first of all, the reception here is horrible because this building is, is a mess. I don't know about that. Um, but you can also hear that the sound is skipping. You hear that? It sounds weird. Um, and that's because I wrote very, very simple code. And I'm going to show it to you now. But this is very simple code that doesn't take into account the different uh, sample rates that we have. Um, so I can write code that does that. But uh, there's a tool that's called GNU Radio. Uh, that you might have heard about. It's a signal processing framework um, and it has many of the signal processing primitives that we, um, that we can use uh, if you want to build uh, radio uh, flow graphs. Um, and the thing, it looks like this, so I can basically tell it this is the, the flow that my signal has to go through uh, for the processing. So I, I read the signal from the RTLSDR, I have a low-pass filter, 
Uh, this is what does the, the demodulation for, for the FM radio. Um, I do some resampling and I send it to the audio sync. And GNU Radio has a very good uh, scheduling engine um, that knows how to make sure that the, the, the buffers are all uh, saturated at the right place and I'm not getting any skipping in the audio or anything like that. Um, so GNU Radio is very good for that. And this thing actually compiles into Python. So, so this flow graph essentially um, you know, gives me something like this. Uh, the details doesn't matter, but this is essentially a Python file that I can work with. Um, I can interface with this with, with another Python module. Um, I can, I, I can you know, either the input or the output, doesn't matter, but I can write Python code that works with this flow graph. Um, and GNU Radio gives me all the, all the signal processing uh, that I want. Um, yeah, so that's essentially uh, kind of the basis of what I want to go over. Uh, some things about if you're interested in this and then where to go from here. Um, you can buy one of these dongles. They cost no more than $10 on eBay. Um, that, that's probably the first thing you want to do. And then there's uh, lots of resources, uh, all these different wikis. Um, Reddit has a really good wiki uh, on the RTLSDR subreddit. Um, there's a really, really good video course by Michael Osman, if you know him. Um, he's a really cool guy. He has like, he, he did like 10 videos on the theory behind SDR. Um, so you can kind of under, better understand the math. Um, but the thing is that you don't really need to know the math because I didn't know this math and I still don't know it very well at all. Um, so you have lots of code that's already written that knows how to uh, work with, with the different types of radio signals. Uh, there was code that does, um, like GSM things, GPS, things that work with your with all the little devices that we have, like that open your car and open your garage door. Um, lots of these things are already, there's open source code that you can already use. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I really encourage you to like to look into this. Um, there's lots of cool stuff to, 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 to look at. And um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it for me. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Uh, so thanks for your time. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, the question is about transmitting. Uh, so this specific dongle doesn't transmit, uh, and that's kind of good because um, I, I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not like. An, I, I don't have a ham license to, to operate a ham radio. Like in-house. Yeah. So 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 if I'm if I don't know what I'm doing, it's good that it can transmit because um, I might be fucking some stuff up, and that I don't want to do that at all. So these dongles don't know how to transmit; they just receive. There are other SDRs that are more, a little bit more expensive, uh, around 100, 200 dollars, um, that do know how to transmit. Um, but if you do that, please try to know what you're doing um, and don't. Uh, there, there's things that like you, you don't want people knocking on your door, uh, telling you that you're you're messing something up. So yeah. Two questions. Uh, where did you get the parameters from? Like, how do you know that you need the bandwidth to be this size? And the second question is when you're picking stuff up, how much is encrypted? How much is it? Satellites just like being photos? Okay. Great questions. So, um, so first of all, this is all open source, right? So I don't know how to demodulate an FM station, but other people did this work already, and I kind of saw what they did, and I figured out like all the different parameters that you saw. Um, it's all out there, so you can just go and learn, and, and then you can have a better understanding of what you're actually uh, listening to. Um, in terms of encryption, that's a great question, because uh, there's lots of things that are being transmitted, um, and these are usually kind of old technologies. Usually, uh, there's some new stuff that that is that does have like proper link level encryption. Um, I won't tell you that I didn't see stuff that shouldn't be like on the air. <laughs> I saw things like that. Um, yeah, and people all over the world also with uh, different types of things that shouldn't be transmitted unencrypted, but they are. Yeah. Uh, what's you mentioned that uh, you give us a parameter of the center of the window? What's the window size? So the window size, uh, I'm going to open GQRX again. Uh, the window size is, is uh, this is a concept that's a little bit weird, um, but it, it, essentially if you tell the dongle I want more samples, you're looking at a wider window. If you're telling it I want less samples, you're looking at a narrow window. Does that make sense? There, there, there's some math involved there um, that maybe people that are more capable of me can explain. Um, but essentially more samples, wider window. Yeah. Um, you might like 
you probably get more interesting stuff at higher frequencies, like once you start getting into like cell phones and even like cooler would be Wi-Fi. How quickly can the SDR sample like can it capture those much higher frequencies? Yeah, so so the, specifically this dongle can capture up to 2.4 gigahertz. So it stops right where Bluetooth and Wi-Fi starts. So you can't yeah, you can't do Wi-Fi with this. Um, and the be sorry. Cell phones, yeah. Cell phones are definitely in range. Do you like pick up all of like what our cell phones are transmitting? Yes, you, you can look at you can look at and well, n not specifically the content because cell phones do have some encryption involved, um, but you can definitely see uh, it's called control channels. You can you can see cell phones. You can see data. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'm not. I promise you, I'm not. Um, but uh, there was one thing. Oh, and and about the. Um, how many samples? So though this cheap dongle, again, this is ten dollars, right? This is r ridiculously cheap. Um, it does no more than two point four mega samples per second. Um, the the better SDRs have USB three. They can capture ten, twenty mega samples per second. You can do much better stuff with them. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that this is a perfectly uh, uh, done plus. So you can also grab TV. Yes, I, I didn't mention this because the, 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 the thing is that these dongles actually are hardware radios. They, the TV thing that they said, they do it in hardware. So um, if you're tuning it to, 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 to receive a TV station, it, the dongle is doing the, the processing of the signal and it's just spitting out an MP4 stream into your computer. So you open VLC and, and you just like see a video stream. I don't get the to process it. No. Uh, the, 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 what we're doing here is essentially bypassing uh, the, the hardware, uh, the, the TV encoding, and you're just telling, you're just giving the samples as they're coming in from the antenna, from the tuner. Thanks a lot.